Cool. All right. So we see that in the room, there's a student from University of Memphis and also when currently attending UPenn Graduate School of Education. So congrats. And feel free to add in the higher institution um, institution that you're currently attending or have recently graduated. We'd love to know who's in the room. And we will officially start in six minutes. Awesome, and I see that someone's currently attending Georgia State University and also is an alumna of the University of Cincinnati. So very cool. Go State. <laughs> we have a Georgia State alum here on the call. And I'm also from Ohio originally. So, uh, you know, Cincinnati, mm -hmm. I'll uh, give a shout out to Southern Ohio. All right, we're going to wait one more minute and then we will officially start. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone who is here joining us on Zoom and on Facebook to the uh, Summer Scholars Program Info Session. We're so happy you are watching and joining us tonight. Uh, if you haven't already, we would love to hear what institution you are currently attending or where you just graduated from. You can pop those in the chat box. If you're on Zoom, you can put them in the comments. If you're on Facebook, we just love to get a sense of who's here. So thank you so much for joining us and sharing a little bit of your evening with us. Uh, I'm Betsy Preter. I'm the Chief of Staff at PMPI, the Postsecondary National Policy Institute, uh, and I am joined by two staff members. Uh, I'll let them introduce themselves really quickly. Irene, do you want to start? Sure. Hi, everyone. So my name is Irene Cruz. I'm the Program and Research Associate at PMPI, and it's good to meet you all. Hello. Nice to meet all of you. Thanks for joining us. My name is Austin, and I'm Communications Associate here at PMPI. And as a special bonus, Irene and Austin are both Summer Scholar alumni. Uh, Irene was one of our first Summer Scholars in 2016, and Austin was a Summer Scholar in 2018, 19, 2019, Thanks. is that right? <laughs> yes. Um, so we are excited to have them as full-time staff with us, but they also bring a really unique perspective also being alumni of this program. So they are gonna be happy to answer questions you might have about the experience. Um, and so I'm, I'm thrilled that the three of us are our team summer scholars. So please take advantage and you can ask questions of two actual alumni. All right, so we wanted to start and share just a little bit about PMPI uh, as an organization. You may have seen this on our website, you may have been reading all about us, but just in case, uh, we are the leading source of professional development for current and prospective policymakers who work on higher education issues. And that's a bit of a, of a mouthful, um, but the kinds of things that we do, we uh, host briefings, we put on boot camps. Some of you may have attended some of those. We uh, organize and produce seminars. We have a leadership programming arm. We of course sponsor the Summer Scholars Program that is near and dear to all of us. Uh, we share reports, we create primers and fact sheets on different uh, higher education issues for our website. Um, we do a lot of education. That is our goal is to educate current and up and coming policymakers about the issues. We don't, we're not an advocacy organization. We don't advocate, we don't comment on legislation. Our goal is to provide folks with a solid foundation of the issues so that they can 
you know, sort of take the next steps in their career. Um, and we are a small team. There are five of us total. And in the summer, we grow to seven with our two summer scholars. Uh, but we're a small, close-knit, uh, and really hardworking team that believes that if we get good, solid research-based information out to policymakers, there will be better policy that improve the lives of students and families. So that's a little bit about us. We wanted to talk a little bit about the program itself and run through some of the, excuse me, eligibility requirements and benefits. And then we wanna leave plenty of time for questions. So if questions come up throughout this, pop them in the Q&A box. You know, don't hesitate, you don't have to wait. If you're on Facebook, you can put them in the, the comments um, of this post so that we get to them when it's Q&A time. So the Summer Scholars Program this year will be uh, May 31st through August 5th. It's a 10 week program. We are planning to do this in person. Um, obviously due to the ongoing pandemic, the location and dates may change, right? We are going to follow current public health guidance and we will communicate any changes to all applicants throughout the, throughout the process. Our goal and our very much biggest hope is that we can do this in person in DC. Um, but of course we will prioritize safety uh, and we'll communicate throughout the process with all of our applicants. And ultimately this program is an opportunity for undergraduate and graduate students who are interested in higher education policy to immerse themselves in the space uh, and get a sense of if this is something they want to pursue as a career or not. I think, I mean, Austin and Irene can comment on this, but I look at the Summer Scholars as really becoming full members of our team. Uh, they contribute in so many important ways to our work and our impact and what we do over the summer. They conduct research, they write reports that we publish on our website. We send summer scholars to as many education policy events as we possibly can. So you can hear from experts, hear about reforms, gain, gain different perspectives. We keep them busy. Um, they prepare resources for policymakers. We do a lot of networking, intentional sort of strategic networking with higher education poly policy professionals who work at advocacy orgs or foundations, who work on the Hill, who work in the administration so that folks can get a sense of the wide variety of policy jobs and careers that are out there for them. So they become so much part of our staff. There's a lot more that scholars can do. A lot of it is shaped by their own interests uh, and what scholars are interested in and studying or, or looking into or, or learning more about. So we leave a lot of room in the program to sort of customize to our scholars themselves. Okay, talk a little bit about the application and the uh, eligibility. This is all on our website. This is also all in the application itself, but just in case this prompts some questions from folks, students must be enrolled uh, as a rising or current senior in undergraduate studies or a graduate student. You can be full or part-time, um, but you must be a rising senior or current senior or a grad student. And we just ask you to submit a transcript to prove that. Uh, this program was developed for students with identified financial need because we want to create space for students of, from all backgrounds to enter the policy space. And we want to eliminate barriers um, such as finances to becoming a professional in this space. So you do need to demonstrate financial need and there's more about that on our website and that, but that means a Pell Grant um, or Pell Grant eligibility. <clears throat> we accept all fields of study and majors, but we are definitely looking for students who uh, indicate an interest in higher education, education policy, but past summer scholars have had a variety of majors. Um, we, because we don't know for sure what will happen with the pandemic, uh, we are, we would like applicants to have sort of working a laptop and internet and sort of a space to work. If you, uh, if we are, do do the program in person, which we plan to, we will provide all of that. We provide a laptop, we provide a workspace, obviously Wi-Fi, any materials you need, um, but just as a backup, if we do have to go virtual, we would need scholars to be able to buy that themselves. This program is not quite full time each week. So we ask for 32 hours a week for the duration of the internship. Uh, often that can mean sort of a half day on Friday um, or we sort of have shorter days on Thursday, Friday. It really depends on what's going on that week. 
but part of that is intentional. We want to be mindful of self-care and mindful of burnout. And we also, especially since we're hoping to be in person in DC, we want to give scholars a chance to check out the city and be able to get a feel for whether or not this is a place they want to potentially move and, and experience in person someday. Other requirements, we are looking for students with excellent communication skills, writing skills, interpersonal skills. This job is gonna be a lot of interpersonal relating, uh, working with our small team, working with each other, meeting tons of folks in the, in the space. Uh, so that's important. Being able to work independently is also extremely important. We provide a lot of support to our scholars, but uh, we do expect them to, to work autonomously on projects. And we do give priority to applicants who live or attend school outside of Washington, DC, and who have never previously interned before in DC. That doesn't mean if you do, if you did live in DC or you have interned before, you're out. That doesn't mean that at all, but we do give priority to folks who just haven't had the chance or access to this kind of opportunity. And of course, our deadline is 5 p.m. on February 11th. So you have some time, um, but get those applications in. Okay, a little bit of the benefits. So we obviously think the opportunity to work with us is a big benefit, um, but we do provide a unique service in the space. And I think that would be intriguing and interesting uh, and, and attractive for anyone interested in policy. We also pay a competitive hourly wage of $17 per hour. If we're in DC, we provide housing. Uh, it's usually in a campus storm of a, a college in DC. Um, and so that housing is completely paid for it and covered. Your transportation to DC and back home would also be provided and covered by us. And then while in DC, we would provide a loaded Metro card so that you could take the, the subway um, in DC. So if, we have to go virtual, uh, we would sort of figure out alternative benefits and we could provide some sort of stipend for housing wherever you live in the summer. You know, we would certainly work with scholars on that if we do have to go virtual, but sort of eliminating all these financial barriers is our main goal in this program. So as I mentioned before, required office supplies and work materials, attend any and all of our events, there's a lot of other kind of professional development that we will plug you into and you attend all of it. I mean, that's, you know, this is not an internship in the sense of that you're making copies and doing grunt work. This is truly a learning fellowship. So you can spend work time talking to people, learning, going to events, writing things, reading things. Uh, it's really important to us. And then, you know, we give all of our scholars an opportunity to evaluate what they felt, how they felt about the program and then shape the future of the program. Uh, so each year we, we modify and improve the program based on feedback. So Irene and Austin have both been a part of what the program will look like this summer because they provided feedback when they were scholars and now they're on staff and can help shape it further. Um, so it's just really important to us that we continue to improve. And then of course we provide mentoring. Uh, I work most directly with the scholars, but the whole team can, works with, supports, checks in on, collaborates with the scholars through the summer. Everyone loves the summer for that reason. We love welcoming two new folks to the team. Uh, so you will be able to work with and learn from everybody at PMPI. Okay, just a quick review of the process. There is an online application. The link is on our website. As a heads up, it includes um, two references, not letters, just references. And we're looking for at least one of them needs to be an academic reference. There are two short answer questions. They're short, we promise. We just sort of want to hear a little bit about what your interest is and, and what this program would mean to you and what it could help you do. Uh, if you're an undergraduate student, you need to include your financial aid award letter so that we can verify, I'm sorry about that, so we can verify you received a Pell Grant and graduate students need to include a couple different documentations, including from their senior year of undergraduate studies and their most current uh, student aid report. So again, all of this is outlined on the website, but just wanted to, to refresh everyone. Okay, before we open it up for questions, I'm actually going to um, play a really short video that is on our website that features some of our alumni talking about their experiences. So if you give me one sec, I will pull that up. Okay, 
Okay, I'm not sure why it's doing that. It's sharing my whole screen. It looks like that to you too as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Austin, do you wanna try it? Yes. I will cool. put the, let me put the link in the chat. And then worst case scenario, if we don't get this to work, folks can have the link. Give me a sec. Both Irene and I make features in this video. <laughs> I <laughs> make some it. cameos. It's such a good video. I want everyone to be able to see it. There we go. There we go. Can you see the YouTube video? That was probably my technical fail. So I apologize. Thanks for everyone's patience. We'll go ahead and start. And I read in Austin, can you give me a thumbs up that you can hear the sound when it starts? If you're hesitant about applying to the PMPI Summer Scholars Program, don't be. It is an experience that you will never find anywhere else. As a Summer Scholar, you get to be a part of an amazing team where you're working, but it doesn't necessarily feel like work. You're researching, you're writing. You get the chance to meet folks from all over in the policy sector, from think tanks, from nonprofits, to folks on the Hill. We'll attend policy briefs to do feature reports. Your work matters because it's going to a place where it's informing someone that wouldn't have necessarily known anything about higher education or about a really specific niche topic. So not only do you get to work with a purpose during the day, but at night, you're able to really immerse yourself in the DC area. You get to enjoy the food. You'll be able to go for a run around the memorial. The awesome museums. Being in a place with so much history, you just become a better person because of it. So if you want an opportunity to be in DC and you have a passion and strong desire for a better understanding of policymaking, if you love education, if you see yourself in the educational space, then go ahead and submit the application and I promise you, you will not regret it. And it's an opportunity that you don't want to let pass you by. So apply. Excellent. I love that video. <laughs> I love seeing all of our alums speak about their experience as well. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of a sense of their perspective on all of this uh, and why you know they really benefited and appreciated it. All right, so I believe we can open it up for questions. Um, you can put them in the Q&A box. You can write them as comments. Irene and Austin are gonna monitor and read them off. But we are here to answer any questions you have about the application process, what it's like to be a scholar, uh, what, what's a day look like? I mean, truly um, anything we can answer, we will. Uh, we want you to feel prepared as you prepare applications. All right, so we have one question from the participants. Okay. Yes. All right, let's keep it rolling. So if you have any questions about the application, the process, anything, please, please keep it coming. The first one is, if we're experiencing issues accessing our financial aid award letter from our senior year in higher ed institution, can we provide a screenshot for proof of eligibility? So as you may have remembered in the eligibility re requirements, there is a financial aid piece. So they're talking about that part. Yes, we know that sometimes collecting documentation can be a hassle. Um, so I think, it, you know, I'm not entirely sure what this email would be, but I, I think that's probably fine. Uh, if you can find, we've certainly had screenshots of student aid reports or screenshots of a financial aid award letter, you know, on, um, taking a picture of it, for instance. So that seems like it would be fine. Anything that, you know, sort of shows that has the appropriate dates on it uh, and that indicates you received a PAL and has your name on it, that will work. And if you submit it, we will take a look and then we will follow up with you if something, well, we're missing something or we need a little bit more. Um, so we review applications as they come in and make sure we have all the documentation. So I would say, yes, that will work. And if it doesn't, we'll work with you about it. So good question. Great. Okay, so we have another question from the audience. So they're saying anyone would probably answer this question, uh, but their question is, what's the greatest takeaway that past scholars gain from this experience? So I feel like this one is geared towards 
Austin and myself. So I can take a stab at it. And Austin, you can feel free. So I think the biggest takeaway for me for this experience was, okay, I went to grad school for higher ed policy, but I didn't know how that actually looked like, like who were different stakeholders, especially in DC, um, because there's a lot more stakeholder than one would think. So this was a great opportunity for me to see all these academic pieces that I was reading in action, right? Like live. And also just know that the world of policy is much bigger than one would think. And also to think of like, where would you like to position yourself in that? So for me, that's where I really gained my understanding of like, okay, actually I would like to be more of an academic in this space rather than working in Capitol Hill. But if anything is professional development and also just like learning about yourself, like where would you want to be um, after you graduate with your degree? I don't know how to follow that up. I mean, that was perfect. Um, <laughs> I think my biggest takeaway was I was Atlanta-based doing some work for Georgia State University. So I had this very institutional level experience and being a summer scholar, was I was able to get into the federal policy of higher education and uh, the networking, the professional development. I, I really tried to take advantage of meeting people on the Hill, um, trying to just get coffee with anyone I could and um, and yeah, just learn about what I wanted out of a professional experience and professional lifestyle. I mean, that's great. I I think that some other things we have heard consistently over the six years of the program is, you know, folks are leaving with a with a confidence that they belong in the space. It can be intimidating, I think, for me as well, for all of us. Uh, and so I think that confidence and that realization that they have something to offer to contribute and that we need folks in this space who are thinking differently about things, who are bringing different life experiences. So I think we have heard that pretty consistently that they, they leave with that sense of belonging uh, and that it positively impacts their career journeys. Um, so I'll just, I'll throw that in there, but great question. Cool, we have another question. This is talking more about the application in of itself. So they're asking, what does the application timeline look like? Mm -hmm. So I'm anticipating like once they turn in the application, what should applicants expect? Yes, great question. So applications are due February 11th, um, as we mentioned, as is on the website. We will review them, you know, we, we, look at them on an ongoing basis to ensure all the documentation is there, um, but we have a review committee. We will start to review applications right away. We will start to set up initial screening calls uh, before a more formal interview, just to get a little more sense of your interest, allow you to answer questions, ask questions, and allow us to ask questions to get a feel for, for you and your background and your interest. Uh, and then we will move some candidates to a formal interview round where they will also meet um, with our president and a member of our team. And that'll be over Zoom. And we'll have a conversation again uh, to find out about their interests and let them ask questions. Because I do think this interview process is two way. We are interviewing, but candidates and applicants are also interviewing us because this should be a good fit for both ways. So we will advance some candidates to that round. At that point, we'll select some finalists. We'll call references. We might do an additional interview. It really sort of depends on what the finalists look like, but we hope you know by mid-March at the latest that we would have um, our two summer scholars selected. And again, the pandemic may delay things. Um, sometimes things can happen, you know, as people are dealing with their own lives, personal issues, you know, we are pretty flexible, but that is always our goal is to move the process along pretty quickly so that folks can have an answer from us by mid-March. And at the, any point in the process, if you were wondering the status of your application, you can email us. Uh, we will get back to you. We will let you know, hey, we're a little behind where we thought, or um, yes, we are just about to reach out to you. So don't hesitate to do that. We understand you're likely looking at other internships uh, and you're trying to sort of figure out your own timeline and logistics for the summer. So feel free to reach out if you ever have questions about the status of your application. Great, and we do email applicants back saying that, yes, we have it. So we do send out a confirmation. So if you're curious about it, or if you're like, hey, I haven't heard about PNPI of like my status of my application, why just submit it, reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to like respond and to confirm that we have it. 
Cool. And then we also have another question, but kind of pivoting. So this is talking more about the Summer Scholar Program in of itself. So they want to know, is the Summer Scholar Program flexible with learning new things as the summer progresses? Yes, for sure. Um, all of our scholars will have a work plan. So, you know, sort of an outline of what you'll be doing uh, over the summer and it will outline projects. Uh, deadlines, timelines, milestones, um, you know, all we are very organized on that front. Um, so there'll be some things that we have already lined up and expect scholars to participate in. And then, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of flexibility. So if there's a project or an issue you're really interested in, you know, we can look for an event to attend, a person to network with. Um, you know, we, we last summer, we had a scholar passionate about um, immigration and higher and immigrants in higher education. And so we really focused our networking uh, to find other folks in that space who work at the intersection of immigration um, and higher education. So we are really open to that. Obviously, we are a higher education policy organization. Um, but, you know, if there's a little bit of interest in K-12, we can we can figure something like that out. And, you know, all these all these issues cross over each other anyway. Um, law, law or you know, health and human services, um, you know, immigration, health, uh, K-12. So we certainly can provide space for folks to learn plenty of new things, but we also will have plenty of things for you to learn lined up. Um, that excites us uh, and we learn along with you. So that is definitely a priority for us too, just to. Great, and then I also want to add uh, that the PMPI team, they're very knowledgeable of things outside their expertise. So if there is an issue uh, that you're really interested in within higher education policy that they're not experts in, let them know. And they can actually connect you with people that are knowledgeable about it and who can actually give you more of a nuanced understanding of that. That happened um, when I was um, a summer scholar before and I'm sure other summer scholars were the same. Um, but yeah, feel free to really like let them know like what really speaks to you either like as a student or as a new policy professional because at the end of the day, it's up to you and your experience and what you want from it. And Irene, you can say we now because you're on staff. So you are we, <laughs> there we go. Yes, summer scholar. You are on the team. Yeah, yes, the you team. will be working wow. with and helping the scholars. Yes, yes, absolutely. But I but I agree completely with that. Um, you know, our focus is what it is, and we all have various levels of expertise and various issues, and we also have interests, and we also have connections and networks. And um, so we I agree with Irene, you know, we want you to get out of it uh, what you came in for. Austin, was there anything you felt like you learned that you didn't expect to, or I don't know, I know that's putting you on the spot, but anything to comment on the learning piece? Um, well, to back back off of just the last question and then go into this, uh, I'll say during my year, uh, I was with Selena, who she was, she was talking in that video, and she was more on the research side, and she met with a lot of people in think tanks, and, I, and then we would just talk to each other about who we were meeting, because I was more meeting people on the Hill, and uh, got to meet like from both sides of the aisle and uh, really um, Mary Ellen helped me out, the president of BNPI helped me a lot out, um, helped me out with those connections. And then, so what I ended up learning and taking away, I learned a lot of communication skills within policy and now I'm communications associate here. Um, and then I, I learned a lot about, I feel like I had very little research experience coming into PMPI and I got to learn a lot doing those featured reports, going to all the events. I think um, I think it really expanded my research knowledge. That's a great point. And I think something Austin also mentioned is sort of how reflects how we do tailored networking. Um, so we like to send scholars together to meet people because it can be a little awkward and nerve wracking, right, to, to do network, cold networking. So we like to send them together. So you have, you know, strength in numbers and have someone to walk and find the coffee shop together, you know, or get on the right Zoom link, as it were. Um, but, you know, we also definitely um, set up one on ones with our scholars. Um, if they're really interested in, you know, working in a government agency and the other scholar has different interests, right? We, we try to we try to give them plenty of time together and then also um, make sure they get some one on ones with folks they want to talk to. 
Great. So pivoting even more, we have a new question. Uh, so this is talking specifically about the financial aid eligibility requirements for the applicants. Um, so they want to know if the summer scholar program is flexible with the required estimated family contribution of less than $5,198. So they're saying if an applicant is over this amount, are we flexible with it? Yeah, I know it's a hard, that's a hard one. I think it's 5,200. So there's a couple extra dollars there. Um, so double check on the website. Um, but we do, I mean, the purpose of this program, you know, is to serve students who can demonstrate financial need. And I know that that can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. Um, but it's important that we have you know, that we have some sort of threshold for our, our own sake and for our funder's sake. Um, so that is the threshold. You certainly, anybody can apply uh, if you want to make a case for yourself uh, that there are other financial circumstances aren't captured there, but that is the threshold. Um, that is the eligibility for the program. All right, so again, if you have any questions, please feel free to chat it in the Q&A box. Again, this space is for you and yeah, a chance for you to learn more about the program and also just like the application. So please, please, please have some more questions trickling in these. So as that kind of, so we kind of wait for more questions from the participants, let's just think about like other questions that we have on, on hold. So let's see, one question that um, I have for the team is um, what, hmm, looking at the questions, and again, you guys asked so many great, great questions. Great saying, questions. Which, ones, which ones do we not have? Um, oh, what happens after the program? So we talked a lot about the program in of itself, right? Like what the application process looks like, what the day in the life looks like. So let's talk about after you finished uh, the summer summer scholars program. So what happens after the program? Is there like an, an alumni association thing or something? What happens? Yes, Irene, thank you for asking that. Uh, no, this is a really important one because we were very, we've been very intentional with this program that you, you do not just cycle through PMPI and you're here and you're out and you're gone. Um, we want to stay connected to you. We often say, say that we are a PMPI family uh, and I know it can sound, sort of corny, but it's true. Uh, we are truly, uh, once you sort of work with us and, and are experience the program, you can't shake us, you can't get rid of us. So we stay connected to all of our alumni um, in this program. Uh, we check in on them regularly. We often help sort of send job postings if they're job searching. We write letters of recommendation, we're references. Um, you know, we try to make connections where we can for them. You know, we try to make introductions where we can for them. Um, we are very committed to their success after they leave the program. Um, but formally, we do have an alumni network at PMPI that was just launched this year. So you, summer scholars will be a part of that. And that means you'll get access to programming throughout the year um, on, you know, professional development throughout the year and an opportunity just to stay engaged. We try to bring our summer scholars together in person. We tried to do this two years ago and then the pandemic had other plans for us. Um, but our goal, once we get out of this, uh, is to bring start to bring folks together in person maybe once a year um, so that you can meet each other in person um, and connect and you know we can we can have that uh, relationship building time with you. But you are definitely sort of part of our network forever. Uh, and we, we take that, you know, we take that very seriously and we certainly are invested in your success as are other scholars. So all of our scholars meet with all of the alumni throughout their summer. Um, so obviously any scholars this year will know Irene and Austin very well, but you'll get a chance to meet all of our alums. Uh, we set up a Zoom with them or if they're in DC, you know, certainly you can meet for coffee, um, but it's just a good opportunity to, you know, sort of form, form your own connections to other members who have experienced this program. Would you two, can I ask you two, would you say that you have stayed connected to your, um, sort of your cohort? So your, your fellow summer scholar, I know a cohort, it's only two people, but. Do you want to maybe talk about whether you've stayed connected or what that relationship was like while you worked at PMPI over the summer? 
Yeah, I, I'll go. I'll go first here. I mean, Selena and I still send memes to each other all the time, uh, and uh, she had. Uh, yeah, I mean, we we became really good friends, and we would go like on our first day in DC, we went to the National Mall together, and it was like, and we got lost in the Senate hallways together, and uh, you know, you're you're in it together, and you're learning a lot, and. It, they become someone you can kind of lean on, you know, and you can ask a question that maybe, well, Betsy is the most communicative person ever. And you always feel like you can ask her any question. Sometimes you just want to ask like the other summer scholar or something. And um, it's a really great relationship. Um, professional and friendly like PMPI always is. And yeah, Selena and I are still friends. Yeah, I can talk about my experience. Um, so it was, um, Another summer scholar named Glenn, he's actually a board member. Um, so he was the undergraduate one, I was a graduate one. And basically like the two of us would be tag teaming wherever we went, we would just like try to troubleshoot like how does the Metro look like? I'm not from DC, I've never been there before. Uh, so definitely trying out the Metro and going to places on time, that was always a struggle, but we did it. Um, and, <laughs> and then also uh, informational meetings, like informational sessions, uh, as Betsy has mentioned, it's a little nerve wracking, right? of like talking to people who are higher up in the policy world and who really know their things because they're experts really in, in different things. So it was really cool just to have someone to confide in of how you're feeling leading up to it and also to debrief of like, how was that meeting? And also just to like learn from each other because we came from very different academic um, backgrounds. Um, so it was really cool for him to let me know what he was studying or researching at the time and for me to share it with him. Um, and yeah, the whole 10 weeks, all of, we were always together. So he was my little brother throughout the experience, but it was great. And it's cool to see that he's also part of the PNPI team. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. We, another one of our alums sits on our board now, which is incredible. So we try to really develop the system of support from day one throughout the 10 weeks. And then, you know, forever after, if it's something you're interested in. And then I always felt connected to the staff too. I always felt like I could send Betsy or Mary Ellen an email, um, our research associate. I, I was like constantly texting. Um, yeah, but you just you stay really connected. And like when I first graduated, uh, Mary Ellen and Betsy were really helping me out and getting some connections. It was in the midst of the pandemic in the beginning in 2020. And uh, yeah, it's a network you can always fall back on and you can always rely on. I would like to add that Mary Ellen and Betsy are great mentors. So even if you are, are not really sure of where you fall in the whole spectrum of like higher ed policy and all these different roles, reach out to them. They are super duper knowledgeable and it's so cool to connect with Betsy every single day. But yeah, they are very, very knowledgeable and they have so much expertise and they're really, really great people and very sweet. So just putting out there that if you're a little bit worried of like, oh, like, I don't know what to expect in policy world in DC. Let them, just to let you know, like this is an awesome team and also they're just there for you. Um, so just really reassuring the fact that the team is so great. That's so nice, Irene, thank you. Uh, it really, I mean, this, when we started this program in 2016, you know, I will speak for, for Mary Ellen, our founder and president, but it was just this labor of love. Like we were so excited about this program and the potential it had and um, it's, truly a joy uh, to be a part of it and to, to guide it. So I, you know, I love, I love talking, um, but I love talking to our scholars. Uh, Mariel and I have different perspectives and have different experiences. And I think that is so helpful uh, and useful to folks trying to figure out their place. And, you know, we're moms, so maybe that helps too. <laughs> we are, we are here for you. <laughs> Any other questions? And if folks are wait, waiting for, or we're waiting a few minutes for questions to pop in, anything Austin, Irene, you think you want me to address or we should bring up to folks who are thinking about applying? I say just apply. Like if you're not sure <laughs> if you're like a great fit for it, just apply and then see how things go. Also, the essay questions, they're actually a good kind of like 
thought provoking kind of exercise for you to mm -hmm. see whether or not you're a good fit um, with the broader um, higher education policy world. It also makes you feel and, th and think of like, what, what do you want to get, get out of it, right? So I like to think of it as like a personal statement question. If, if you think about like your high, your college um, application process, but I think that's also a good um, barometer for you to, to think of whether or not this is a great fit and just apply. That's what I did. <laughs> yes, and look how that worked out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You know, that reminds me, Irene, thank you for bringing that up, especially with the essays. A question we get asked every year is, you know, what, what makes a good candidate, right? What can I do to have the strongest application possible? Um, and so, you know, just to address that, the, those essays are really important. You do not have to come in as a policy expert, right? But what, in fact, I imagine you wouldn't. <laughs> but um, what we're looking for is someone interested in learning, who has a, a passion and interest, a curiosity for policy and, and higher education. So I think making your interest clear in your essay is very important. Um, and have somebody, have somebody uh, proofread it before you submit it. Always a good idea, um, you know, just to help help your essay stand out. Uh, but I think that's, you know, we're looking for who can we, who will gain, gain the most from this, who will really be impacted from this. Uh, and so we want to see a clear interest. So that is always something you can do to strengthen your application. But I would also say it's just, it's so important to be yourself and be genuine in who you are and your interests and what you want out of this. It's just, you know, this needs to be a good fit for us and for you. So I think you know applicants who are truly themselves um, and, and sort of demonstrate that through their essays are also also stand out um, as, as top applicants but I don't know I mean you two were obviously top applicants um, any other advice you would have in actually you know the, making your their application stronger I mean I just love uh, use the word passionate because that's like one of the main words that come to mind with PNPI you know, being a small team, it just seems like all of us are so passionate about what we're doing. And I do think I tried to convey that in my uh, uh, application. And um, yeah, and I just enjoy the conversations when you have them with Betsy and Mary Ellen. Uh, I remember I was, I was sitting in my kitchen, like getting ready. I had the Zoom ready for like 15 minutes before it was even going. And uh, I just came away from it feeling like that was a conversation I felt like I already learned from. So, I mean, like Irene said, you know, use the application to also go ahead and start that professional de development from day one and then come into Summer Scholar ready to learn even more. I love that. Great. Right, I, I have a question for you too. Um, we also get asked quite a lot uh, about sort of a day in the life. Uh, and you both, of course, had in-person experiences. Uh, so I can speak a little bit to virtual afterwards, just in case, uh, to give some people some context. But can you both sort of share sort of, I don't know, a general, what was a day like for you? Or what, you know, describe one of your days uh, that you think was representative of being a summer scholar. I can go first. Okay. Um, so I think the day, to, day of life, it was, me waking up in the dorm and then taking the metro to the PNPI office, which is was in the Chinatown area. Um, and from there, just sitting down and every week we had like different listing of things. So I do remember going to the laptop and working on like a feature report. So reading like an article that was given to me and then making a report and doing that. And I remember like Glenn in the other desk working. So we were both working together, furiously typing in our laptops. And I do remember like um, sometimes in the afternoon we have to go to like a, a think tank somewhere in DC and go to like one of their events talking about like a policy event. So like making the trek um, to that location and sitting at a presentation and taking notes. And then we had to like write about it later. So that was basically what we did, writing, being in the office and then going somewhere. So you were definitely not in one place at one time all the time and also you there was like a different change of pace um, in, in the work. Yeah, um, yeah, really similar experience. I stayed at the GW dorm. And then uh, I remember like every morning you would, I'd take the, the same three blocks down before heading to the Metro. And you could just see like the George Washington monument over the um, Roosevelt building. And it was like, 
this crazy moment every morning where I was like, I'm in DC. And then, uh, you know, you'd get there and check your email and check your to-do list, check in with Betsy. And then, um, yeah, maybe you have an event that day and you would hop back on the Metro with the other summer scholar and you go to this event and you would just furiously take notes like um, so that you could do the like write up for it. And uh, it always felt like anything you wrote, whether it was a feature report or write up or just helping out with some of the research tasks. Uh, it always felt like you were doing something towards something and that your voice was being heard while you were writing it down. And that was, yeah, that was just a major part of the day. And then, yeah, and helping out other um, P other members on the PNPI team, uh, like, uh, you know, they would just come out and be like, hey, can you do some research on, on this organization or on like HPCUs? And you would, you know, it, it was, yeah, it was so much fun. You know, and hearing you both des describe that, it's it was really very similar on Zoom, honestly, when we did a virtual Summer Scholar experience, which we did two, two years, 2020 and 2021, you know, there would be meetings because everybody was online. So uh, everybody was hosting virtual events. Everyone was networking and connecting virtually. So, uh, you know, there's no commuting um, and <laughs> nothing like that. But there were certainly meetings, networking, events, write-ups, research, check-ins. Uh, right, we, we sort of keep, we're all, summer's busy, we all stay busy, um, while being mindful of burnout, of course, but it was really pretty similar virtually. Obviously, we would have loved to connect in person, um, but in terms of the substance, you know, we were able to provide that same level of interaction and stimulation and learning and, and um, opportunity like that. And then after the workday, I would either go run at the National Mall or uh, we were also in Chinatown and I would go to the portrait gallery and I would like take a book and then read it um, in the portrait gallery in their little middle garden section. I love that. <laughs> Except for the running part, but otherwise I love it. I think that was the last time I actively ran. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Also like we did field trips, right? Like, okay, aside from you know, the day-to-day -day of working with the PMPI team, we also did field trips. Um, so I went with Glenn and with Betsy. We went to the Washington Monument. So we went to the tippy top and to like the little observation deck up there. And that was really cool um, to be able to see like a full panoramic view of DC. For me, that would always stick with me as one of my treasured experiences from the program. Um, and then also like doing little things here and there. And also like if there's other PNPI events um, that we're hosting, we also go at Summer Scholars. I do remember one um, somewhere in Maryland. Don't know the name of the location, but we went somewhere. So yeah, you also get to do some fun stuff and travel to different yeah. places um, with events. Great, yes, thank you for bringing that up. We do try to do little field trips, you know, a couple over the summer just to do, sort of get a sense for the city. Um, so I, I do, I remember, I mean, I remember field trips with both of you, um, but I remember going up to the top of the Washington Monument, which I think was closed when you were there, Austin for renovation. I'm not sure we did that. Um, but yes, yeah, so, you know, we try to use that opportunity too, just to share a little bit of the love for the city um, in addition to all the, all the work. So thanks for bringing that up. We did the duck tour. Yes, the duck boat. <laughs> yes, for those of you unfamiliar, it's the magical experience of riding in this tank-like vehicle that goes on land and in the water. Yeah. Uh, it's a very, you know, I think they have them in Boston and other cities, but it is a very, it was very fun. That was a fun experience. Yeah. All right, so Irene, we're looking at about 10 more minutes if needed, any questions? come in or anything you think we need to address before we say goodnight? Yes, yeah, so I'm not seeing any new questions from the okay. participants, but I feel like we have a good grasp of the application in of itself, what the scholar program looks like and also what to expect afterwards. Um, so okay. I guess we can wrap up. Okay. Ooh, you know, right. I would, I will echo, I echo Irene's statement, you know, just apply if you're interested at all, please get your application in, get it in by the deadline. We are strict about that. Mm -hmm. If you have any challenges with applying, uploading documents, tech issues, 
please reach out to us. Uh, there is a real person checking that email several times a day. Um, so please reach out if you run into any problems and we can work with you. If you have challenges finding the right documentation, reach out, we can help you. Um, if you have questions that pop up after you see this or later, email us, we'll get back to you. Um, you know, we really, we really commit to that. So I just wanted to encourage, hopefully you will all apply, um, but also wanted to encourage you to, um, you know, use us as resources before the application is due as well, if you have questions and anything we can help you with. I think that's I think that's it then we'll go ahead and say good night um thank you everybody for mm -hmm. for watching attending logging in however you did it um we really appreciate it of course this video will be available afterwards um for anyone who's interested and again reach out if we can help you um in any way with your application and you know good luck to all of you have a great night bye everyone thank, thank you, you.